This time a DAC that costs 500 euros is the size of a packet of cigarettes and blows away anything that comes close to it. Am I high on illegal substances? No, just got Quartz Mojo working. Less than two years ago Quartz impressed me, my colleagues and in fact the entire hi-fi market with their first portable DA converter and headphone amp named Hugo. Currently costing close to 1800 euros, sound wise it still is without competition. If you watch this video in the browser you see a link to the Hugo review in the top right corner. Otherwise go to youtube.com slash c slash the Hans Beekhuizen channel. There you find all videos I have published including the Hugo review. The little Mojo measures 83 by 63 by 23 millimeters and weighs 180 grams, as said the size of a packet of cigarettes. In good court tradition the machined aircraft grade aluminium housing keeps vibrations away from the sensitive electronics. The inputs are on one side, an SPDIF on strangely enough 3.5 mm jack, a USB audio profile tool on micro USB, a power input also on micro USB accompanied by a charging indicator and an SPDIF optical in on Toslink. The opposite side holds two 3.5 mm jacks that both are capable of feeding a line input or headphones. Given the different electrical properties an amp and headphone should not be connected at the same time. One of the long sides holds three illuminated ball shaped knobs that provide all the control and status reporting. The right one is the on off switch and has to be hold for two seconds to prevent accidental use. It changes color depending on the sampling rate playing, again in standing chord tradition. The two other ball knobs are for volume up and down, where the volume is also indicated by colors. If you hold the two volume knobs when switching on, the output is set to line level. In Quartz world that's 3 volts instead of the Red Book 2 volts. If you're not interested in technique, you can skip to the timecode below. During high end Munich, May 2015, the Mojo was introduced at just below 500 euros. Again a portable DA converter and headphone amp, but considerably smaller than the Hugo. It's not the first Quartz DA converter in this price range. A number of years ago my first Quartz converter was the Cordet Gem, my first encounter with Quartz products and a positive one right away. The reproduction of transients was far better than that of other DA converters, certainly at that price. The secret appeared to be the unique 2048 tap reconstruction filter designed by Rob Watts and implemented in an FPGA chip. The DA converter itself was an off the shelf DA converter by Sirius Logic. Jitter was remarkably low too. I immediately wondered whatever could justify the 4600 euro price tag of that top model then, the QDB76, if this little gem was already that good. So I requested a review sample of the QDB76 and immediately bought it. When the HDSD version became available, it replaced the original QDB in my set 1. The QDB had 4096 tap filter, while the Hugo uses 26384 tap filters. So what's that with those taps? I'm not going to teach you digital filtering techniques simply because I'm not clever enough to do so, but this is what I learned over the years. Two types of filters can be used in digital audio, infinite impulse response or IIR and finite impulse response or FIR. The latter has the advantage that it can easily be designed to have linear phase behavior. The number of taps indicate the number of memory required to implement the filter, the number of calculations required and the amount of filtering it can do. The more taps, the more stop band attenuation, less ripple, narrower filters and so on. 
In other words, the more tabs, the more quality, given proper filter code. During the product introduction in my country, Rob Watts told that he had calculated that 1 million tabs would be ideal, but is yet unobtainable. Its top design, the 11,000 euro core Dave, now has 164,000 tabs. The number of tabs in the Mojo is not clear. I seem to remember Watts mentioning 64,000, but since I was not sure, I searched the web only to find comments stating Court was not willing to share the number of tabs in the Mojo filter. They did say it performs equal to the Hugo, but there are differences in implementation. I would also like to mention that Although important, the digital filter is not the only quality defining technique. There also is the DA conversion and the analog buffering that needs to be good. The DA conversion is discreetly built and the analog buffering is dimensioned to offer 125 dB of dynamic range so even the most sensitive in-ear monitors won't produce noise. There's not much to tell operation-wise. Input switching is automatic. USB has first priority, while SPDIF coax has priority over the optical input. You best only connect one input at a time. The module will automatically find the input used. The optical input accepts up to 192 kHz PCM and DSD64 in the OP format. The coax SPDIF accepts up to 384 kHz PCM and DSD64 and 128 in DOP format. Over USB, a PCM signal up to 768 kHz can be played and any DSD over DOP signal up to DSD256. Since the Mojo is USB Audio Profile 2 compatible, it will work with computers running OS X and Linux and smart devices running Android and iOS, all without having to install a driver. Windows computers will need a driver which is downloadable from the Quart site. Both Android and iOS devices need special cabling to be used with the Mojo or any other DAC for that matter. There is no hardware volume control from the computer. Your software can of course reduce the volume at the expense of resolution. Giving the computer power inside, the Mojo remains fairly cool about hand warm during use. It gets slightly warmer when charging. The Mojo comes without a charger, a wise choice since most of us will have a standard 1M5 volt USB charger for use with our cell phones. If not, you can buy one for less than 10 euros. Look for a power supply for the Raspberry Pi 2B and you even get a 2M version for that money. Don't spend money on a linear power supply to improve the audio quality since the design is done so that the power supply doesn't have any impact on the sound. If you want to use it without the power supply connected, depending on the load it can do 8 to 10 hours on the internal battery. Although I have used the Mojo with the AudioQuest Nighthawk headphones, and Sony MDR EX700 and Argon EP4002 in-ears, I find myself no reference for judgment on headphone use. I use the Mojo mainly as desktop DA converter in combination with a Mac Mini running Rune, J-River and Audiovana 2 Plus, with a Blue Sound Note 2 and with a Raspberry Pi 2B fitted with a Hi-Fi Berry Digi Plus board running either Volumio or Rune Audio. Of course, all in combination with my three reference sets. The sound is a lot like the Yugo, but there is a difference character-wise. The Yugo is somewhat more refined, drawing sharper lines as where, as where the Mojo draws somewhat softer lines leading to a slightly warmer sound. I still prefer the Yugo, but if I would pay the extra 1200 euros? The Mojo outperforms anything I have heard under a thousand euros for sure and I challenge any manufacturer to lend me a sub 1500 euro converter to beat the Mojo. I will be the first to admit that I am wrong. The openness, filigree fine highs, the tonality of the bass lines 
the super clean piano right hand, the royal yet precise stereo image. Need I go on? Yes, I've heard better converters, but only in quite different price categories. This is an ex extremely good DA converter that performs excellent in my set 2 just below the Hugo and even in my big set 1 it sounds convincing. I think that non-trained audio lovers will need some time to decide what's better, the big QDB or the Mojo. That doesn't mean the Mojo will please everyone. It's like gourmand food at pop food prices. There are more than enough people that still would prefer pop food and that's ok. But if you only have pop food money, you can now choose for gourmand food if you like. There might be other reasons why some will not choose for the Mojo, like the small size, the lack of remote controllability and the lack of decent input switching. Again that's fine, that's sufficiently offered by other manufacturers. Perhaps Cord will consider a Mojo TT, a tabletop version like they did with the Hugo. If not, your choice will be either audiophile sound or the other options. If you choose for the audiophile sound, I currently know of no other DA converter for this or even double money that can compete. But as soon as I encounter one, you will be the first to know. So if you want to remain informed, subscribe to this channel, follow my Facebook or Google Plus page or my Twitter account. You can also post questions there. You will find the information below this video in YouTube. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and tell your friends on the web about it. I am Hans Beekhuizen for the HB channel. Thank you for watching and see you the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.